every day and every every week, every day of the month, you know, we, we have Australians coming to this uh, village. And the people of Villa Bortone, well, we recognize them immediately. Australians in the streets, Why would we you see them. them? <laughs> well, they're taller, they are fair, they are, and they have this special aspect, you know, they're sure of themselves and, uh, and they are very uh, outgoing. They, they talk to the people of, uh, of the village and, and so, uh, and the children who learn English at school, they, they, are, they enjoy having the opportunity to speak uh, their little uh, English with them. We were having a beer in uh, Amiens yesterday and uh, I've said um, bonjour and he repeated that and I said, how's your English? He said, worse than your French. <laughs> If I had have been standing here on the northern edge of town looking north over the Somme Valley just a few days before the German capture of the town, I might have looked up in the sky and seen a dogfight going on between British planes and red German planes. Now this wasn't rare at the time, this was the famous flying circus, but they were known around this area. But on the 21st of April 1918 was the day, 10 kilometres north of here, that the famous Red Baron, Baron von Richthofen, was shot down and died. Now the squabbling still goes on to this day as to who fired that fatal shot. Was it the Canadian ace behind him in the air, or was it Australian machine gunners on the ground? Apparently a doctor has said that the bullet did appear that it came up from underneath, but let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story. The important point was the famous Red Baron had been shot down and died. They gave him full military honours, they took photos of it, and they dropped it over the German lines to let the Germans know the honour they gave their famous ace. Not long after returning home from shooting this story, a work colleague shared with me a family collection of photos taken by her grandfather who was a member of the Light Horse and then a pilot with the Australian Flying Corps. Many of the photos in this doco are from his vast collection and it turns out he was being attacked by the Red Baron just minutes before the Baron was shot down and killed. The young Australian pilot was proud to be a wreath bearer at von Richthofen's funeral and on returning home to Victoria, he lived a long and full life, including being on the founding board of ANSET Airways. I decided to call this story the Anzac Connection and I'm happy with that name but I had no idea just how all the connections would work. I feel like I've been standing in an old telephone exchange and for every wire I've pulled it's pulls a dozen other elsewhere. Last night's a great example of that. I'd heard that two young French journalists had put together a documentary on Anzac. They'd been to Australia and they put together their views of Anzac and what needs to happen in this region. And so last night I was able to attend the premiere of that documentary in a university in Amiens. L'esprit des Anzac a traversé les générations jusqu'à devenir l'objet d'un concours. We were expecting uh, to do like a two minutes um, piece for our school and when we came to the celebrations for the Anzac Day 2005 in Villas Bretonneux, we found out that you had hundreds of Australians attending these celebrations and uh, this was a very important memory they were trying to, uh, to keep and we found out the Anzac Prize uh, was created this year for these uh, students from Victoria um, and we thought this is a great story. Um, and it's really about um, 
a period in which Australia became a nation. After the projection of the movie, we had that debate with um, very different kind of peoples, but um, all related to, to this Anzac history. There was a journalist working for the local TV channel, and uh, he's the one who covered the Anzac Day for the last years. And then there was someone who is the head of tourism in the department. There was a historian and there was um, some member of the town council in Amiens. Baigne dans l'atmosphère familiale, scolaire, universitaire dans cette éducation depuis qu'ils sont tout petits. Je n'ai jamais entendu. Although the debate was in French and I couldn't understand any of it, the body language was speaking loud and clear. These girls were taking on the big guns and they did a great job. They believe more needs to be done in Amiens and the surrounding districts to support the Australian and Anzac connection. Yeah, it was a great night and um, we were really happy that you had some Australians uh, who came as well. We are here for the 90th anniversary. Um, We'll hope, we hope we can show it to more uh, Australians in the future. Well, they were all friends in the end, and I went away quite proud of these girls and their recognition of the importance of Anzac in the future of northern France.